And we continue our conversation with Caleb Frostman, Democratic Party candidate for the Wisconsin Senate. First district race you mentioned in our last segment, throwing billions of dollars into, into a foreign company. Um, Foxconn, since we last talked, Foxconn has expanded now, uh, purchasing the Watermark Building, announcing plans for an innovation center in downtown Green Bay. Does that change your opinion at all about Foxconn? Uh, it doesn't. I'd love to see Foxconn be successful. I think if we're going to invest that kind of money, um, I have the best hopes of what might happen. But in terms of you know, how this came about and the, the level of incentive, the, the incentive on a per job basis, um, and my background in banking, if, if a deal is outside the box in terms of size and scope and term of repayment, I think best case scenario is about 25 years. You tighten regulations and you tighten covenants. You don't unsolicitedly relax regulations on environmental issues like wetlands and air quality. Um, and the big one for me is also just the opportunity cost of what this incentive package could have done for what Wisconsin really needs, which is broadband expansion, it's roads, it's our schools, it's health care. And so uh, to me, it's a pretty strong uh, condemnation about the ability uh, of this administration to uh, diagnose what ails Wisconsin and prescribe what would work well for it. Um, what we need are the things I mentioned earlier, like investments in our roads, investments in our schools, uh, and investments in Wisconsin companies that, you know, have started in someone's basement and didn't get a $200,000 per job incentive uh, to get started. Those folks need help too, um, and we need to make sure that they can be successful. So do you see the Foxconn deal as being etched in stone, or could there, would there be changes to it? Yeah, it's a great question. And so I think um, my understanding from the folks I've talked to is the ink is dry, they're moving forward, ground is broken. And so the area I would look to add value is to, you know, I, as a senator, and then also I've been appointed to the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation uh, Board of Directors, uh, would be to tighten the deal at any covenant violations, extension periods, those kind of things. Um, when you have those inflection points um, in a negotiated deal, uh, you can hopefully tighten some of the environmental pieces, uh, some of the economics as well. So that's where I would look to add value as a state senator. You mentioned earlier, not only are Wisconsin manufacturers having a tough time with these tariffs, but they also can't find enough people to work. We just don't have enough qualified people. Mm -hmm. Are the technical schools doing enough in, in, in that area to, to move people toward those manufacturing jobs? Oh, that's a really good question. That's a thing I've been struggling with for a long time. So my last role as the executive director of Door County's Economic Development Corporation, that was the number one issue was workforce. And where do we find them? How do we get folks steered in that direction? It's really uh, there's been this cultural shift in, in my experience that, you know, a four-year degree is the only path to personal prosperity, which just isn't the case, but it's really difficult to convince parents and convince school districts that, you know, there are, there's a future, a strong economic future for welders, for CNC machinists, for diesel technologists. Um, and so having those conversations early enough and introducing students to those different industries uh, at a young age uh, and making sure that they're aware that they can make a decent living with very little or no student debt, um, I think making sure that we... Um, you know, fund the technical colleges adequately and make sure that we have, um, you know, technical education in our high schools uh, are all important factors in making sure that those jobs can be filled going forward. Speaking of high school kids, how important is it for these kids now to be able to build up these college uh, uh, credits before they get to, to higher education? Oh, it's, it's incredible. I really uh, applaud what Green Bay has done, and I think, um, you know, they paired the public school district with uh, NWTC and UWGB to make sure that every senior, you know, graduates, I believe, I don't want to get the number wrong, but with a, a semester or a year's worth of college credits and, you know, that saves a, a student uh, a semester of student loan debt, it saves them a semester of housing, and so uh, to the extent that students can get a head start through high school on, um, you know, getting advanced college credits, uh, it's a really wise investment for them, it's a wise in investment for the schools and for the community, so I think it's uh, really important for our students. You mentioned student loans, and you're not that far no. <laughs> displaced from the student yeah. loan era, UW-Madison. Can anything be done to help these students pay back these sometimes exorbitant loans? It, it's almost as if you can never pay these back. Yeah, it's really a, a kind of an epidemic and across the country, but in Wisconsin too. Uh, Wisconsinites hold about $25 bil uh, billion dollars in student debt and the average amount for the Wisconsin graduates about $30,000. And that's really a horrible impediment to building wealth as you look to invest in your 401k and your first job and uh, put a down payment on a house and those kind of things. So it's really, I think, a serious, serious impediment to economic growth here, not just in Wisconsin, but across the country. And so one of the ideas that I've 
heard that I like the most is from our state treasurer candidate, Sarah Godlewski, who uh, is a steward of, of some public trust funds. The office is the steward, um, and they're able to invest those funds as they see fit. And, you know, the average student loan rate, I, I don't want to get this wrong, but it's, you know, it's, it's higher than a, than a mortgage rate, higher than a car loan. Um, I want to say it's in the 7% range. And so um, if we can invest some of these public trust funds in student debt uh, relief at even a 4% rate, that's less than students are paying, and it's more than these bonds are accruing. Uh, within these trust funds. So I think there are options on the table uh, to invest in student loan debt that would relieve interest rates um, from our students and also uh, do well for our state. And again, is this something that would be done on the state level or on the, or on the federal level? That would be level on the state level. Uh, well, I think there certainly is appetite for both. I think it's nice um, and it's encouraging and, and gives me uh, a lot of optimism that there are things we can do on the state level, uh, but I think it should be looked at, of course, nationally, that there, like I said, if we want to look at pumping money into the economy in, in the traditional sense of buying new cars and buying new homes and, and you know, buying new appliances, the 22 to 35 to 40-year-olds that are facing a $300 or $1,000 a month student loan payment aren't able to make those investments, let alone uh, invest for their future in a 401k. So it should be a comprehensive look, but I'm really encouraged at what uh, folks in Wisconsin are talking about doing. We continue on with State Senator Caleb Frostman right after this, so please stay with us.